Hey there everybody, today I'm going to be going over when to use certain strategy settings and how to optimize them with your team. And we're also going to be going over just the general presets that I like to use. So these are going to be applicable to most teams. Uh, I will state specifically if there is a type of team that it's not applicable to. So the first thing we're going to do is turn to stealing bases way down. Uh, the only time you don't want to do this is if you have a team with a lot of base stealers. Uh, in that case, you might want to turn it down a little less. Now, if you got a speedier te a team with a couple speed guys, you might put it up a tick or two, but really, you're not going past that middle bar unless you've got a lot of stealers. It is better to have higher percentages than higher totals, so having the lower totals will increase your percentages. Base running, we're also going to go conservative here. Uh, having conservative base running will, gar or will lessen the opportunity for your guys to run into outs. Again, generally better to be safe than sorry with this. Your faster guys are likely to attempt to go for that extra base anyway. This is just going to make sure that guys who should not be going for those extra bases don't anyway. Hit and run. We're actually going to set this a tick above stealing because hit and run has a higher success rate than stealing. So uh, again, if you have higher stealing, let's say you're up to here, your hit and run should be a tick above that. So uh, that's generally what I would recommend. Sacrifice bunt, I do not like. We're going to set these all the bunts to the minimum. Bunt for hit is another one. You really do not want it. You're hardly ever going to have guys bunting for hit, so that's generally where you want it to be. Pitch around. This is going to be one of the ones that will depend very heavily on what your team looks like. If you have a lot of higher control guys, then you can pitch around more. That'll lessen the number of home runs your guys give up at the cost of walks and strikeouts. If you have a lot of higher movement guys, then you don't want to pitch around very much since you'll be able to optimize your, um, your walk rates and strikeout rates without giving up as many additional home runs. So if you have a more balanced staff, you're going to have it towards the middle. Now, the Dimebacks have a lot of guys that give up home runs, and we want to kind of minimize that. We also have a little bit of control on our staff, so I'm going to go two ticks to the right on the pitch around slider and hope that we can decrease the number of home runs we allow with that. Now, intentional walking, that's generally bad. You're going to want to drop it pretty low. If you've got a poor pitching staff, just generally all around bad pitching and defense, you might have this a couple ticks up, but you still do not want to intentionally walk guys very often. Hold runners you want to do more often. Uh, this is one of the things where there's not really too much of a downside to doing hold runners. It just will drop steal success rates and steal totals against your team. So I would recommend turning that up on all teams. And for your infield in, you don't want to do this too much. It's better to get the out than to prevent a run. Or you're going to have a higher chance of preventing a run, but you'll decrease the opportunity to get an out, and you really just want to limit damage rather than try to micro it. In situations where it's appropriate to play your infield in, your manager will still do it. If the game's on the line, your infield will be playing in no matter where you set that. So this is just to prevent those situations like in the first inning. We're playing the infield in with a guy on third and one out or something ridiculous like that. You don't really need to worry about it. And for the corners, we are also not going to play those in too much. We're not particularly worried about bunting, so I'm going to set that pretty low. The guard lines, we're also going to set this low. This just prevents extra base hits. As you guys have probably picked up by a lot of my videos, I don't really care about extra base hits. They're not a huge part of offense. So I don't really care about preventing them either. And setting guard lines low is going to just help our infield be more prepared for overall coverage rather than just focusing on doubles. We want to shift a lot, though. This is something I definitely think is important. Um, using shifts will help optimize your defense to be where the ball is more likely to be hit, and it will help you prevent... Uh, it'll decrease BABIP, essentially. So for outfield shifts, we're going to do this quite a bit, too, but a little bit lower since for infield shifts... Uh, Infield or batters have a tendency to hit neutrally with the infield, but a tendency or a tendency rather to pull slightly on ground balls, but a tendency to slightly spray on fly balls. So we want to have that a tick a little bit lower than infield shifts. Now we want to shift our outfield depth a little bit more than normal as well, but not quite as much as some of the other things. We don't want to overfit. So if we have like a contact guy who's not super power heavy. Our infield or our outfield rather will play in, but if we play too far in, then we might risk up 
giving up extra bases unnecessarily. However, we can prevent outs. We just don't want to overfit two guys. And if we play too deep, then we might let... That's really what I'm worried about. If we're playing too deep on power hitters, we'll allow more singles to drop in, which I don't really want to do. I'm trying to have this... We want to shift more on the weaker guys, but we want to shift less on the power guys. So for our starting pitcher hooks, we're going to set this to be a little bit slower. Your starting pitching is generally going to be better than your relief pitching. You don't want to have them pulled early. That is really when you can run into disaster. If your starting pitchers are getting pulled uh, from the game much too early, that'll kind of gas your bullpen. We want to hit our relievers a little bit faster just so that uh, they don't get gassed overly quickly. If you have a higher stamina bullpen, you can set this to slower again with the starting pitching. The higher stamina it is, the slower you want it to be. If you've got a bunch of low stamina guys, you want the hook to be quicker. And uh, we really just want to optimize matchups in the bullpen. We're not too worried because if a starter pitches, he can't pitch again for five days. If a reliever pitches, he could pitch tomorrow. It's more pitch heavy dependent on the relievers. So I'm not too worried about pulling guys quickly there. Now for the pitching matchups, we want to get the platoon advantage as often as we can. This is actually even more true perfect team than base game, but it is especially important to try to optimize your handedness. So if you've got a stream of lefties, you want to make sure you've got a lefty coming in. Got a stream of righties, you don't want to bring a lefty in. Now for the batting matchup, we're going to set this two ticks down. If you've got a team where pinch hitting is going to be more prevalent, you might set this higher, but we generally don't want to pinch hit very much. And I'm actually just going to go down here to the pinch hit for position players and set this basically never. Our starters are the best guys. There's really not much reason to pinch hit for them. Now in a National League team, you can set pinch hit for pitchers. I actually want to do this a little bit lower. You don't want to pull a pitcher early. If your manager is going to bring in a guy to start the next inning anyways, they're going to pull the pitcher for a pinch hitter. You just don't want to do it excessively. And for openers, if you're using openers, you're going to crank this all the way up because otherwise you may not see your openers get used. You want to have them every single time through the rotation. And uh, yeah, that's really the important thing with the openers. You want to make sure you can crank it so you uh, actually have them used basically. Now, for individual player strategy, we'll look at a couple of players and how they look different and uh, set their strategies. So we'll start with Madison Bumgarner here, one of the Dimebacks pitchers. So we'll go up to the top, and the first thing you want to do with all of your players if you're setting strategy is override team strategy settings. Now, if you want to leave them at the default, you just leave this to adjust team strategy settings, and uh, that will let them just use these strategies directly. But if you want to make sure that your player is doing something different than the team strategy settings, you got to go to override team strategy settings, and then they will actually follow these. So Madison Bumgarner, hook is starter. We're going to want to check his stamina here because that's where we're, what we're looking at. It's very high. He's got 75 stamina, so I'm going to set his hook pretty slow. We want to leave him in longer, make sure he gets his proper number of pitches. Now, his hook is a reliever. He's not really coming in as a reliever, so we're not too worried about this. If he happens to, we could put this actually a little bit towards the slower end. Uh, he's probably going to come into eat innings if he is coming in as a reliever. Now, for pitch around, does he have higher step or control? Rather, he does. Does he have lower movement? He does. So we want to pitch around more frequently so we can limit the number of home runs he allows. Because he has higher control, he's not going to walk as many batters even with the higher pitch around. So we crank this to three or four notches. I'm going to go to four, and it will kind of help neutralize his weaknesses. So the intentional walk, I like to do it more for ground ball heavy pitchers since that'll set up the double play. More often, he's a fly ball pitcher. I also like to do it more for ineffective pitchers. He's not the best pitcher, but he is a fly ball pitcher. And with the pitch around slider cranked, he shouldn't be as bad. So we're going to drop the intentional walk to the first tick here. Now for hold runners, this is going to depend partially on the hold runners rating. He's above average, so we don't need to go all the way up with this. But we do still want to put it to three or four uh, just to make sure that he's not allowing too many steals. Playing the infield in, well, again, he's a fly ball pitcher. We're going to set this to the minimum. Uh, we don't really want to play the infield in for a fly ball pitcher at all. Guard the lines, once again, going to set that to a one. Uh, this is something you're going to set to basically the same, regardless of who's your pitcher. You do not really want to guard the lines ever. 
For infield shifts, he's a fly ball pitcher, but we still want to shift pretty darn often. So we're going to set this to three ticks. Outfield shifts, this makes a little more sense to do with fly ball pitcher, but I'm going to leave outfield shifts and outfield depth shifts to the same number. Now for aggressive tiredness hook, you want to hook, put this, enable this for every single pitcher. Basically what this means is when a pitcher gets tired, they will be more likely to be pulled by the manager. And uh, that's important. If a pitcher is getting tired, they're going to be less effective. They're going to be worn out. They risk higher injury rates. Uh, you definitely want to pull them as soon as you possibly can. Now, pitch count, this will once again depend on stamina. I will drop a general pitch count overview in the description uh, for when you want to pull guys. But for 75 grade stamina, I'm thinking 105 pitches is probably fine as an absolute maximum. Uh, 100 is probably a little bit better. You want to be on the safer side generally. Batters faced, you don't want to do this for anybody but openers. I don't generally think it's a good strategy. Force roll, if you've got a guy that you're worried your manager is going to use him correctly, that you could force them to be a starter reliever or closer. I'm not going to worry about that. Madison Bumgarner is going to be used as a starter. Bench win fatigue percentage. This you don't need to worry about either. Your manager will make sure that if your pitchers are tired, they're not starting. You do want to, uh, if you want to use him as a follower. So let's say I'm in confident that he can be an effective pitcher. I don't think he can go deep into games. Uh, that would probably be somebody more like Luke Weaver, a three-pitch guy. Actually, he's got a lot of stamina. So maybe somebody like Caleb Smith. Yeah, Caleb Smith's a good example. He's a three-pitch guy. He's not a super effective pitcher. His stamina isn't super high. So maybe if I want to increase his effectiveness, get him some platoon advantages, I will use Smith behind a right-handed opener, try to get him better matchups, and uh, he'll be more effective in that role. But as for Bumgarner, I think we're good here. As far as bench player of day-to-day -day injury, I personally like at severity at least moderate. Um, sometimes you put it to substantial, but really if your player has a day-to-day -day injury, you want to make sure they don't re-aggravate it. So next we'll do somebody a little bit different. Actually, you know what? We'll do Caleb Smith and we'll set up the opener mechanics. I'll show you guys some strategy settings on the uh, pitching page as well. So once again, going to set the override team strategy settings. He's got a little bit lower stamina, so we are still going to have him hook slowly, but not quite as slowly as Bumgarner. Now, as a reliever, we're going to leave him in a little longer. Uh, for the pitch around, he once again has a tendency to give up a lot of home runs. He's not as high control as Bumgarner, though, so we don't want to overly pitch around. I will still set it up two ticks, though, so we can limit those home runs. As far as intentionally walking, he is also a fly ball pitcher. He's an extreme fly ball pitcher, actually. So even though he's a really ineffective pitcher, I still want to set this basically to the minimum. For hold runner, he has a 55 grade hold runners. So I'm not too worried about where to set it to the same as Bumgarner's three ticks up. Playing the infield in, definitely not doing that for an extreme fly ball pitcher. Guard line, still going to put that really low. Infield shifts, only two ticks up for an extreme fly ball pitcher, in my opinion. We're going to put the outfield shifts up four ticks since he's going to have more balls into the outfield and shifting the outfield depth up to three ticks so we can make sure to get more outs there. And we are going to set an aggressive tiredness hook as we did with Bumgarner. Now the pitch count, there's a couple things about this. First of all, Caleb Smith's stamina is 55, so normally I'd set the pitch count around 80 for this type of pitcher. Um, he has 80 to 85, that is, probably closer to 85. He's also got only three pitches, which kind of concerns me. He's unlikely to be as effective as deep into games. So maybe I'm going to drop him from 85 to 80 just to try to get him out a little bit sooner. And I said that batter's face is really only something you'll do for openers. Three pitch guys is kind of a situation where you might consider it. If you're really worried about a borderline caliber three pitch bat, uh, pitcher in your rotation, you might set their batter's face total to 18 to 27 to prevent them from going through the lineup too many times. Now we'll do a reliever here. So let's throw in Stefan Crichton. So Stefan Crichton here, 
he is going to override team strategy settings. If he happens to get a start for whatever reason, we want to make sure he gets hooked as quickly as possible. I'd recommend the, doing this with any reliever you do not feel comfortable starting. Uh, it's unlikely they'll be put in the position, but if they are, you want to make sure to get them out as fast as you possibly can. Now, Crichton, he doesn't have very high stamina, and we're hooking our relievers fast. Well, he is pretty effective overall. He's not an ace caliber reliever by any means, so we're going to hook him pretty quickly. For the pitch around, well, he's got good control, but he also has good movement, so I'm actually going to set this down a tick. We want to limit the walks, increase the strikeouts with him. I feel confident he's not going to give up too many home runs. As for intentionally walking, we're going to set this low once again, even though he is a ground ball pitcher, because he is a more effective pitcher than Bumgarner and Smith, at least out of the bullpen. As for hold runners, Crichton's not as good at it. He's a 45 grade guy, so we want to set this up to four, make sure he's not allowing steals. Playing the infield in, I'm going to set this up a tick higher because he is a ground baller. But I still don't want it to be very high. Guarding the line is going to set this to the minimum. For infield shifts, we're going to set this all the way up to five as a ground baller. We do not want any balls getting through that infield. Outfield shifts, I'm only going to set it up to two this time. And outfield death shifts will be one. Once again, going to click that aggressive tiredness hook. I'm not worried about pitch count as a reliever. That's going to vary uh, game to game. So everything else I'm just going to leave as it is, except, of course, the severity, at least moderate, if that's something you'd like to change. So now let's take a look at a hitter. We'll do, I think Tim LaCastro is a fun one, so we'll do him. Now looking at Tim LaCastro here, we've got a guy who's higher contact, he's very speedy, and he's got solid defense in the outfield. So we're going to go up to the top, and the batter side is a little bit different. Once again, we got to override our team strategy settings here. Now still in bases. Tim LaCastro is a great base stealer. He's got 65 speed and 85, or rather 80 grade stealing. So he's going to steal at a pretty high rate when you tell him to, and he'll be successful a large portion of the time. We will set this to pretty high on the frequency scale. We want LaCastro capitalizing on his opportunities. Now, something I want to point out is not all stealing profiles are created equal. If you've got somebody who's got higher speed than stealing, if I can find somebody like that, you want to minimize their stealing profile or uh, steal rate because they will be successful a lower percentage of the time. It looks like the Dimebacks actually may not have anybody like that. But yeah, here we go. Paven Smith. So he's got a higher speed than stealing. This means he's going to attempt to steal more than he is capable of succeeding. He is somebody you're not going to want to have steal very much. So unless you're way into the blue with the speed stealing, if you've got higher speed than stealing, you want to go much more conservatively on the stealing than you would normally. And by way in the blue, I mean like 90 grade speed and 80 grade stealing or something like that. Now, this is also going to depend on how strong the arms of the catchers in your leagues are. If you've got some strong-armed catchers, you don't want to steal too much. Now, LeCastro, he's also a pretty good base runner, so we're going to set this a tick above average. We want to get him uh, going around the bases pretty often. Hit and run. So he makes contact a lot, which means that when there are runners on base, they have a higher opportunity of taking an extra bag because LeCastro is making contact. He's not the best contact guy, but he has 55 avoid Ks, so we're going to set hit and run to a tick above average with him as well. Now, sacrifice bunting and bunting for a hit. LeCastro does sack bunt well, and he bunts for a hit all right, but this is still something we don't want to do too often, so I'm going to set the sacrifice bunt to one tick from the minimum, and same with bunt for hit. Now, force start slash use at position. I would recommend not really using this very often. For spot and lineup, I don't recommend using too often either. Bench win fatigue percentage. So if he gets below that number, he will not be put into the lineup unless absolutely needed. I generally like going 88% for anybody who's not at a premium position. 90% um, for second base and third base. Sometimes right field as well. And 92% for premium positions. I'll also go to 88 for catchers because they can kind of last a little longer. Now, pinch hit for player. Tim LaCastro is not the best hitter, but I don't generally like using pinch hitters, so I'm going to set this a little lower. For your better hit players, uh, be it hitters or fillers, you want to click this button because that will prevent them from being lifted for a pinch hitter in case your manager decides to do something stupid. 
Now, pinch hit platoon percentage, that will determine how often he's hitting versus his own handedness versus opposite handedness. Now, Castro is actually pretty splitty here. 10 points of contact, 10 points of power. I think that's significant, so we're going to crank this up a few points. We want the Castro hitting versus lefties more than righties. And that's it for individual player strategy. Um, I'm going to go over to the pitching strategy here. We talked about using Caleb Smith as a follower. So there are two ways you can do this. First, you can go to his strategy settings, and you can click the Use as a Follower button. So now if we go back to the pitching page, Caleb Smith will be a follower, and we can see that here. So you can also do this by clicking the follower secondary role here on his page and then dragging him into the rotation. You'll see he is still selected as a follower. So uh, another thing to point out here is if you are using followers, you need to make sure you're using openers as well. So you can just do that by going into the secondary role and clicking the opener button. If you guys have any questions about strategies and what they do, be sure to ask me. I can make a follow-up video if needed. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next video.